Book Third, Chapter Eight of Les Misérables, translated by Isabel F. Hepgood. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Vera Nguyen. Les Misérables by Victor Hugo. Book Third, The House in the Rue Plumet. Chapter Eight, The Death of a Horse. The dinners are better at Eden than at Bombardus, exclaimed the fiend. I prefer Bombarda to Eden, declared Blashville. There is more luxury, it is more Asiatic. Look at the room downstairs. There are mirrors, glazes, on the walls. I prefer them, glazes, ices, on my plate, said favourite. Blashville persisted. Look at the knives. The handles are of silver at Bombardus and of bone at Eden's. Now, silver is more valuable than bone. Except for those who have a silver chin, observed Tolomy. He was looking at the dome of the Invalide, which was visible from Bombardus' windows. A pause ensued. Tolomy, exclaimed Fameux. These Toulier and I were having a discussion just now. A discussion is a good thing, replied Tolomy. A quarrel is better. We are disputing about philosophy. Well, which you prefer, Descartes or Spinoza? To Tolomy. Said Tolomy. This decree pronounced, he took a drink, and went on. I consent to live. All is not at an end on earth, since we can still talk nonsense, for there I return thanks to immortal gods. We lie. One lies, but one laughs. One affirms, but one doubts. The unexpected burst forth from the syllogism. That is fine. There are still human beings, here below, who know how to open and close the surprise box of the paradox merrily. This, ladies, which you are drinking with so tranquil an air, is Madeira wine, you must know, from the vineyard of Coral de Chfreirush, which is three hundred and seventeen fathoms above the level of the sea. Attention while you drink. Three hundred and seventeen fathoms. And Monsieur Bombarda, the magnificent eating housekeeper, gives you those three hundred and seventeen fathoms for four francs and fifty centimes. Again, Famuy interrupted him. Your opinions fix the law. Who is your favourite author? Père? Gant? No, Chou. And Tolomy continued. Honour to Bombarda. He would equal Monophase of Elephanta if he could but get me an Indian dancing girl and Dugillion of Chironia if he could bring me a Greek courtesan. For, old oh, ladies, there were Bombardas in Greece and in Egypt. Apollaeus tells of them. Alice, always the same. Nothing more unpublished by the creator and creation. No subsole nuo, says Solomon. Amor omnibus idem, says Virgil. And Carabine mounts with Caraban into a bar of Saint Clou, as Aspasia embarks with Pericles upon the fleet at Samos. One last word. Do you know what Aspasia was, ladies? Although she lived at an epoch where women had, as yet, no soul, she was a soul, a soul of rosy and purple hue, more ardent hue than fire, fresher than the dawn. Aspasia was a creature in whom two extremes of womanhood met. She was a goddess prostitute. Socrates plus men in school. Aspasia was created in case a mistress should be needed for Prometheus. Tolomy, once started, would have found some difficulty in stopping had not a horse fallen down upon the quay just at that moment. The shock caused the cart and the orator to come to a dead halt. It was a beau mare, old and thin, and one fit for the necker which was dragging a very heavy car. On arriving in front of Bombardus, the worn-out, exhausted beast had refused to proceed any further. This incident attracted a crowd. Hardly had the cursing and indignant carter had time to utter with proper energy the sacramental word, Maton the jade, backed up, with a pitiless cut of a whip, when the jade fell, never to rise again. On hearing the hubbub made by the passers-by, to Rumi's merry auditors turned their heads, and Tolomy took advantage of the opportunity to bring his elocution to a close with his melancholy strophe. Et les dés de ce monde au couscous et carros ont le même destin et rousse, il a vécu ce que vivant les rousses l'espace d'un matin. Poor horse, sighed Fantine, and Dahlia exclaimed, there's Fantine on the point of crying over horses. How can one be such a pitiful fool as that? At that moment, favourite, holding her arms and throwing her head back, 
looked resolutely at Tolomy and said, Come, now, the surprise. Exactly. The moment has arrived, replied Tolomy. Gentlemen, the hour for giving these ladies a surprise has struck. Wait for us a moment, ladies. It begins with a kiss, said Blacheville. On the brow, added Tolomy. Each gravely bestowed a kiss on his mistress's brow. Then all four fell out through the door, with their fingers on their lips. Favourite clapped her hands on their departure. It's beginning to be amusing already, said she. Don't be too long, murmured Fantine. We are waiting for you. End of book third, chapter eight.